On today's show, we dig deep into our archives and wind all the way back to 2010, where we bring you some Speedway classics on land and water. First up, we head to the Mildura Sunset Strip in regional Victoria as we look back on the 2010 Mildura Slam Fest, featuring the big names in top door slammer racing, duking it out down the 8th mile. Then we switch to the world of V8 Superboat Racing and head to Griffith in regional New South Wales as we look back on round two of the 2010 Australian Superboats Championship around the Lake Wayangan complex. This is Speed Week. The door slammers have hit town. Welcome to Sunset Strip in Mildura for Slam Fest. We're covering the 18th mile door slammer style. Mildura is a fantastic place, it's sited on the Murray River, great weather and uh, we've certainly got a lot of motorsport enthusiasts in Mildura. The drag racing here has been going on for some 20 plus years and uh, I guess this is a culmination of what we've been looking for for all those 20 years. This is a fantastic event for Mildura, um, particularly for the tourism industry, for the accommodation industry, but certainly for the local motor racing crowd, you know, the people love V8s, they love drag racing, they love motor racing, they love motorbikes and this really is just a fantastic event and uh, we hope to see them come back year after year after year. Well it's an eighth mile, not a quarter mile today. We asked the drivers, what do they think about that? Look, eighth mile is a great uh, format for the country tracks. They haven't got the runoff that a full quarter mile have. You still get the burnouts at the start, which is you know most important in drag racing. Anything exciting happens in the first half of the track, so it'll be good on a spectator point of view. Oh, I enjoy the eighth mile. I've done a bit of eighth mile racing. I'm probably the only door slammer driver that here that's actually raced on this track before. It's a good way to race. It's probably you know, it's huge in America. I, everyone's going eighth mile. So it's a wide open deal. Big question is, who's going to win this sucker? Uh, probably my father. My father's raced on um, every regional track in Australia probably 50 times more than any guy here. He does a lot of drag racing in his life. He's 30 years into it now and um, he's got a lot of experience under his belt and he's probably the, the smoothest driver out, driver out of all of us. Everyone, anyone that gets in one. <laughs> yeah, they're all good. Anyone can win. Anyone could pull it off today. There's no one who, who's more of a threat than someone else, I suppose. Maybe, maybe, probably the guys who have been around the longest, like Victor and those sorts of guys, um, you know, they'd have a setup for a track like this, I reckon. I'd like to say me. I'd be bloody real happy if it's me. I think Morris Fabietti, he's like downplaying everything. Oh, we've got to take it easy. We've got to. And then you see his boys over there going 100 mile an hour. You think, oh. Speaking of Morris Fabietti, we're going to meet some of the stars at Top Door Slammer today, kicking off things with a man they call Fabulous. As he shows us over his pristine Holden. It's a uh, 2006 Holden Monaro Top Door Slammer. It uh, runs a 511 Keith Black uh, drag racing engine, makes about 3,000 horsepower. We run 5.84 at uh, 250 mile over the quarter mile. I started probably about 25 years ago running uh, the off street drag racing at uh, Calder Park and uh, went on from there, decided I'd like drag race and built a race car and just stepped it up from there and there and just a few race cars later and here we are in Top Door Slammer. 
there's uh, there's four of us which work on the car usually two nights a week and uh, all day Saturday. You know, and that's week in, week out. You know, we're not working on the race car. We're servicing the truck and the trailer. It's a lot of work, but uh, one good run down a quarter mile is worth it all. Naturally, to make a few dollars to uh, help support the car helps, but it's great to uh, to go out in the hill and to see your own crew uh, uniforms and everyone out there supporting you, and it makes the fans feel special. You know, they've got your name on there, a picture of the car. It's great, great for Holton Trade Club. It gets their name out there. It's just a great winner for all of us. Victor and I decided that, uh, that the country, the regional Australia, doesn't get to see much uh, of, of this style drag race. And you know, we might do a match race here and there, might have two cars, might have four. We decided, well, why don't we just try and bring a whole field of door slammers here? 14 or 16 door slammers, that'll just blow the whole countryside away. And uh, the response we've had here in Mildura is just overwhelming. Well, the good thing about door slammer is people can relate to them. They can see, well, this is a Monaro. I drove it there in a Monaro. You know, there's Camaros over there. There's Judy Bakers, there's Chevys. People know what they are. They don't understand what a, a 2006 Yahara is. What's that? It's a top fueler. But they know what a Monaro is, and that's what they back. That's what they drove there. That's what they love to see. Here we've got the re rear wing. What that's used for is to produce downforce for the huge 34 and a half inch diameter, 17 inch wide tyres to grip to the track. Here the body, full carbon fibre, 2006 Holden Monaro. Looks like a Monaro, goes like a bat out of hell. In here we have the driver's compartment. Full chrome molly cage, aircraft tubing, a lot of bar work in there, try and keep the driver safe in place of an accident. The car is made left-hand drive. The reason for that is, is to keep the weight over the left-hand side of the car to counteract the torque reaction of the car. As you can see, there's a lot of bar work in here, a lot of safety, onboard fire extinguishers in the back, gear shifters on the steering wheel so I don't have to take my hands off the steering wheel when we run down the quarter mile, running 403 kilometres an hour. Up towards the front, we have 8.3 litre, 511 cubic inch, 3,000 horsepower Keith Black engine. Revs 10,600 RPM. And that's about seven times as much as a V8 supercar. This is real horsepower. Up the front here, we have the fuel and the oil tanks. 20 litres of fuel for one quarter mile run. Best time in the ET, we've run 5.84s at 403 kilometres an hour. What a buzz. Yes, he can talk the talk, the fabulous one. Morris, Fabietti and Mildura is very much a Holden town. They're going to love this. Jeez, Rob Oberg, how busy is Caparis with the burnout? Well, these guys have only got to walk the racetrack. They haven't actually done a shot in anger. And in the burnout, they're getting the first opportunity to feel what the start line's got. And I think Peter Caparis found himself a lot busier than he'd hoped to be. Look at that crowd off to the left. Mildura is a motorsport mad community. It's certainly, too, the home of Darren Morgan. So drag racing people know there's some heavy artillery that's come out of here. And look at the crowd the slammers have attracted here with Slamfest, Rob. Uh, an absolutely fantastic event for the whole region. And the idea of the door slammers to go out to these regional tracks and put on a full show, if this is the way it's going to go, it won't be long before you see this right across the country. Have a look at this car of Peter Caparis. It's one of the oldest in the country, but still one of the quickest. Well, it applies to the driver too in some ways. Caparis v Fabietti. Morris on the far lane. Caparis in the Batmobile, closest to camera. Oh, Fabietti! Oh, Rob Oberg, that is an horrific impact. That's an incredible hit. And so close to being a two-car deal. Peter Caparis in trouble right off the line. But Fabietti, he's just tried to drive that a fraction too far, maybe. That is an absolutely huge hit. 90 degrees to the fence. How he didn't hit Caparis. Pete must have had some sense that something was going wrong there. That's a bell ringer. That's a car killer right there. It's, oh, my goodness gracious. Massive impact. Here's the onboard vision. Boom! Well, Fabietti, unbelievable. Oh, um, mate, I, I can't tell you. I just seen a flash of red and white, and I seen under his car. I, I, yeah, I was just, yeah, it's not a good, not, not a good situation at the moment. It's too bad, I couldn't see. Was that good, Greg? All okay, mate. She's fine. Part of racing. 
I, I took off and then someone said he'd come in front of me. I can't even remember him being in front of me. It's just, yeah, it's just, I, I can't tell you. I just, yeah, it's not good. It's racing, man. What do you do? But it's, I was just more worried about Morris. Once I, someone, as soon as I got down there, someone said he's out of the car. That's fine, man. These, these things get fixed, but, you know, just don't want anyone to get hurt. We're all here having fun, you know? It's like, and then this sort of stuff happens. There's probably, you know, 150 grand damage there, you know? So it's, yeah, it's a lot of damage. You know, no one wants to go home and do that, but, you know, like, it's just the way it goes, I suppose. Oh, well, that's what they call door slammers. Well, it could be wall slammers today, actually. Nah, look, it, uh, we backed it down a fair bit for this track, but obviously uh, probably didn't back it down quite enough. It seemed to leave the start line really good. And then next thing you know, I'm uh, heading across in a Peter's lane, and, and all I could think was, geez, I hope I don't hit the side of Peter. And uh, I was going for the wall, but there's nothing I can do about it. It was up on its side. Hit the wall, and mate, I'm fine. Uh, put on a good show for the crowd, holding genuine parts. Monaro did what it was supposed to do. Roll cage did its job, you know, all the safety equipment. I'm fine. It's been up a bit, but hey, we'll fix it and be back. It's a door slammer and on these tracks, you know, you think, is it going to knock the tyres off it straight away? Is it going to spin the tyres? Is it going to shake? Is it going to turn left? Is it going to turn right? Is it going to wheel stand? And that's a part of driving these things. You just never know what they're going to do. I did take it easy. I only lifted 4,000. <laughs> Second gear or first gear? Second gear. Well, Dino Brzezinski is the wild man of door slammer. He doesn't paint words, he just tells it as it is. Let's get a look at his wild ride. Well, it's 3,500 horsepower under the bonnet. It's a door slammer. You actually get into the side of it, open the door, and you sit to one side of it. It's not like a funny car. A funny car, you sit in the middle, you sit to the side, we've got the diff behind us, and we can't see nothing, and we've just got to try and get them down the track. Yeah, door slammer racing's come a long, long way. These are big operations these days, and Brzezinski has a significant investment in this this weekend. Well, as you can see, I've got probably, I don't know, 20, 30 people here this weekend. Hotels, accommodation, trucks, two trucks, two transporters, um, a lot of food, uh, plenty of alcohol tonight. Uh, that'll be about a couple of thousand. Um, hopefully we don't crash. Um, but we have been pretty spectacular. We've put it on the roof and we've done all sorts of crazy things, but um, touch wood, we won't be putting it on the roof and hopefully we'll win. Yes, Door Slammer 101 with Dino Brzezinski, one of the great characters of the sport. Here's a Chevy matchup right now, Rob Oberg, as we check out Slam Fest in front of an enormous crowd at Sunset Strip Mildura. Yeah, well, brzezinski has got his 67 Camaro, of course, a very well-known car right around the country. And Brett Gillespie, he's taken the hot rod route, a 1934 Chevrolet. But on this eighth-mile style of racetrack, I would suggest that Gillespie's probably got the advantage. He's got a car that is normally very, very quick over that first 200 metres. Well, that's what all the guys were saying about this one eighth mile circuit. It throws the whole thing open. A couple lend towards the more experienced guys like Victor Bray and people like that. But as they're all saying, most of the drag racing happens in that first couple of hundred metres. Well, that's where it's all you know, so critical with getting the amount of power you're feeding through the clutch to those huge rear tyres. And it's fed progressively. It's like a huge hill start. You put it all on the line instantly and you'll just go up and wheel spin. Good reaction time for Dino. He just, I think, gets through it. Let's have a look at it. 235.35 k's an hour, a 4.8 ET. Gillespie actually had him in the uh, performance department, but he went to sleep on the line. So uh, Deno Brzezinski, his better start line reactions, got him through for the win. And let's face it, Rob, this is a place you cannot go to sleep on the line. It's only an eight mile, so you're going to have to get the job done. You don't have the rest of the track to run him down. One of the most radical looking cars in the pits this weekend is Ray Bernard. The purple people eater is really turning some heads. It's 57 Nomad, um, 521 inch BAE, Blanco, um, Root Supercharger, and it's purple and I believe the only one in the world. So what does Ray love about door slammer racing? Just the difference of what cars are allowed in the class and pretty unpredictable. 
more than that, though. Bernard loves the fact that anyone can come and win. Everyone are competitors. It's um, never a given thing of who's qualified. So anyone's always in for a chance, like um, us with a very low budget. This could be the only place in the world right now that a station wagon is about to do over 200 k's an hour, Robbo Mook. Uh, there's every chance of that. And have a look at that. Andrew Sutton in beside him in the uh, Commodore. Now, we talk about distances here at Mildura. Sutton all the way from Alice Springs. And, of course, we've got the Chevy Nomad down from Brisbane. Well, it is the most geographically centred position in the country. We talked before about how many people love their motorsport in this region. Every weekend, 52 weekends of the year, Rob, there's a major event in this town. It is phenomenal. They almost had to shoehorn this event in, and the crowd has responded. Bernard, the far side in that awesome Chevy Nomad up against Sutton, nearest to camera. Well, Sutton's got a lot of racing on dodgy racetracks, and he's the one that's got the better of the tracks, and that's for sure. Dodgy. I'll get you to explain that in a moment. Reaction time of 0.33. They were pretty even at the lights, but unfortunately for Bernard, drama's off the line and Sutton creamed him. What is he referring to is the available traction. Now, well, these guys normally run on championship racetracks where top fuelers and top alcohol cars and supercharged outlaws have laid in miles of hot, sticky rubber into the racetrack. They come out to the regional tracks and they are the first cars down. So guess what? The amount of traction isn't as good, but it's not a reflection on the track itself. So dodgy equals slippery. I get you, Rob. Hi, I'm Ben Bray, driver of the Castrol Edge CV8 Monaro. Yeah, well, Benny Bray, like every driver here this weekend, has a story to tell about how he got into racing. He was born to race, and it seems born to win. Well, when I, when I was like 17 years old, um, Dad gave me an opportunity of a lifetime. He told me to do it or don't do it. He said, your choice, son. Gave me a perfectly good drag car, all the equipment to do it that I'd been working up to because my whole life, all I ever want to do was drag race. And, um, you know, he gave me a perfect opportunity. I went out there, and um, for the very first event, I wasn't meant to race the car. But um, at the, in, in the A grade category, I was meant to run the B grade. I ran in group one. I went out there, the slowest car of the field, had the baddest running qualifying, went out there and won the event to get the top three runners. And I won a Christmas tree that all these guys have been trying to win for 10, 20 years of their career. And I won it on day one, so it felt pretty good. So what's it like then to be in Mildura racing on a 1.8 mile drag strip? Uh, it's really good. Like, um, we go to a lot of regional tracks and a lot of city tracks, all right? So, at the end of the day, there's um, 16 of us here and we all got to race in the same conditions. Uh, we all been backing the cars down a little bit, but uh, one of my teammates went out a little bit earlier, did a test run, and he tells me not to back it down too much because the track's pretty good. One of the most distinctive-looking cars in the pits at any given event is the Wild Willys of Sean Mifson. It's a top door slammer, it's got a 521 cubic inch uh, blown motor in there, Hemi. Produces around 3,000, 3,500 horsepower. So racing on the eighth mile here this weekend, Mifsa believes his versatility might help. Look, there's all different sorts of racing. I mean, I've come up through the ranks, through bracket racing and that. Bracket racing is more dial your own, door slammer racing. It interested me because it resembles a car. Um, and it's heads-up racing. It's basically first to the other side, and that's what we wanted to do. Yeah, Mifsa's not into the technicalities of bracket racing, Rob, is he? he just wants to get to the other end first. And he's got a very good setup to do it, but he's up against Ben Bray, you know, one of the winningest uh, top door slammer drivers around. And as Ben said, they do go to a lot of regional tracks, so they have got a setup for uh, running where the traction is just that little below optimum. But you've got to say that one advantage that Mifsa have got he is running a GM Root-style supercharger, whereas everyone else runs a PSI. What does that mean? Well, a PSI makes more horsepower in the second half of a quarter uh, mile. The Roots blower makes it off the start line. These guys aren't getting to the second half of a quarter mile. The Roots blower should have the advantage. The Willies up against the Monaro here at Sunset Strip, Mildura. Slam fest, and there's an enormous crowd in the house. The Braves have been in town all week promoing the event, and we're set. Oh, Mifsa, trouble off the line. Look at the reaction time, 0.16 for Benny. Yeah, yeah, have a look there, and Mifsa, too much power too soon, and Benny Bray, a nice clean run, 4.28. That is uh, very tidy across the eighth mile. Mifsa had to triple pedal that thing. Straight as a die for the Castrol Edge Monaro, though. 
I tell you what, that'll win him a lot of fans here in Mildura, and there are a lot of fans on the hill. Yes, if he didn't already have fans. Let's look at the onboard shot right now of Nifsen. Very busy, had to pedal and pedal and pedal. In the end, though, Benny draws first blood. Peter Blake is the front man for this family racing organisation that has really flown in the face of convention when it comes to making horsepower. Uh, well, we do things a little bit differently here. We run a uh, Sainty three-valve uh, overhead cam motor uh, as opposed to the Hemi configurations that most of the other guys run here. We also run a uh, four-speed gearbox and a... Uh, uh, we got, you know, we do things a little bit different, differently here. I think uh, it was sort of the pinnacle of the sport when uh, when Dad was involved, and um, he just sort of, I don't know, felt like he had to had to be right at the top, and we've sort of been there ever since. We've been sort of, um, you know, playing around down on the on the bottom levels of door slammer, but um, you know, we we like tinkering, and, and that's what we're here for. He's the first one to admit if he couldn't bring his family along. He wouldn't go racing. They bring me along. Um, without them, it, none, none of it could happen. My wife Katie here, she helps me out in the shed every weekend, uh, every spare moment. We're working on the car, and uh, my dad's there too. He's um, he puts it all together, and we have a bit of fun doing it. Well, his wife Katie likes to get her hands dirty. She doesn't just sit up in the stands, but does it make her nervous watching her man race? Oh my God! <laughs> no, um, it actually is pretty slow motion when I'm down there. Luckily I get to be on the start line with him and with that uh, it sort of takes the nerves away because I'm not sitting in the grandstand getting nervous. So hopefully, fingers crossed, everything goes well today. Wow, that is a tremendous story. How hands-on is Katie Blake? <laughs> I'll tell you what, they, the whole sport of drag racing is a family sport from the participants right through to the crowds. Well, good example here is you've got Katie now backing up her husband and you've got Victor Bray with his wife out there backing him up, but it wouldn't be any other way, would it? I don't think anyone bar Marie Bray has ever backed Victor Bray uh, from the burnout, and that is what it's about. What about Peter Blake? Here he is, a young bloke taking a different route with their overhead camshaft engine against the six-time Australian champion, the godfather of top door slammer and the real, you know, the motivating force behind this, behind this slam fest concept. Victor Bray in the other lane. This is a hell of a moment for Peter Blake. Thank goodness it's not a knockout style elimination event though as the Chicago shootout idea. You'll see this guy's run at least twice. The Mildura crowd soaking it up. It's dusk. And Victor's out of here. Good run for Blake. He'll be happy with that. Oh, Blake. He very late on the lights, but guess what? That's two hundredths of a second quicker than Ben Bray. The quickest run of the day so far. But Victor Bray, the experience, nailed him on the Christmas tree. Better start line reactions and ran the big Chevy away for the win. The visual image of him nailed to the Christmas tree I'm dealing with here. Victor, smooth, that's what 30 years in drag racing gets you. But do you think of Blake's, it was an arrow straight down the eighth mile here at Sunset Strip. He'll be happy, even though Victor will get the win. Have a look at this car. Scotty McLean out of Darwin. They've come from everywhere. Straight down the middle, mate. It's easy. I tell you what, this is quick. Straight down the middle. Oh! 4.15 seconds, 287 kilometres an hour. The fastest yet. Tremendous run from McLean. He goes straight to the top. Now, Blake is the second fastest man out there, even though he got beaten by Victor Bray. How does this all work? We're going to put Rob Oberg to the test when we come back after this to explain how the competition's working. Welcome back as the sun sets over beautiful Mildura. This is the Edge Hotel Motel Sunshine Strip in Mildura Slam Fest. Now, it's not just door slammer action here today. The supercharged outlaws have shown up in big numbers as well. And Rob, the crowd really getting a dose of some wild looking gear. Well, the supercharged outlaws certainly the perfect support category for the door slammers. What's it all about? You can have supercharged sedans, dragsters, hot rods, altered, funny cars. As long as they've got a supercharger, they race on handicap, and it is a perfect breeding ground for people that move up into the professional categories such as top door slammer. 
the biggest thing these guys and girls love to do is get out there and have fun, race, and huge burnout. I was going to say, Rob, that was an absolutely massive burnout just before all the old holes. Such a myriad of different cars you can see in this category. Well, front engines, uh, slingshots to blown supercharged utilities and Camaras. You name it, they're there. Look at this crowd. Absolutely massive. The Sunset Strip, they've never seen a crowd quite like this as we get set for more of Slam Fest. One of the great characters of Door Slammer is Peter Kapiris. This man loves to stand on the gas and he loves his Studebaker. It's a very fast car. It drinks a lot of fuel. Spend a heap of money on it and uh, yeah, have a lot of fun. Now, these are the only cars to drive, eh? They're just, they're just a lot of fun. They don't do what they're supposed to do and it's just a real exciting race. So what are the hardest parts of keeping a team like this on the road and basically happy? Oh, just sorting out the arguments is a big job in itself, keeping everyone happy. No, I mean, we've been together for years, you know, we've been racing nearly 19 years and most of them uh, started with me, so, you know, it's, yeah, it's all like a big family. Peter Kibiris has had highs and lows in his drag racing career, but we wondered what was the biggest highlight of his racing so far. No, I'd have to win, be, you know, winning the championship in, uh, Jesus, it's been that long, 2002, I think it was a, oh, 2002 or 2000, I'm not sure, but yeah, was, that was the best feeling, winning the championship. Hi, my name's Tony, I'm one of Peter Kapiris' crew members. Um, I do engine maintenance for Peter. Anyway, on our car up the front here is our fuel tank, which runs alcohol-based fuel called methanol, and it comes through the fuel pump. Um, and it gets delivered up through here and into the injector hat, which puts it through our supercharger, which is a PSI type screw charger, and puts it into the engine. And this is where I mainly work on the heads up here, doing the tappets after each pass. Anyway, once the power comes through, it comes through into the clutch can here, which has got a clutch, which is really the thing that you've got to tune to get down the track. And then it comes through the gearbox here, which is a Lenko planetary type gearbox, which is air shifted from these buttons up here, which the driver pushes. Um, he's got a taco up there, which has got a telltale light on him, which will flash red in his face to tell him when to change gears. Uh, and then we come through to the main thing that, that helps put the tyres onto the uh, power onto the track are these slicks here, which we run at you know around six pounds of air. And, and then if it's really good sticky traction, we need a wheelie bar to stop the thing launching up into the sky, and that just balances the car so that we can go down straight down the track. Hope you've uh, learned a little bit from me. Thank you. We have, Tony. We absolutely have. We've learnt that Peter Kapiris is about to have his hands full right now with the Bray family. Now, here we go. Ben Bray, furthest from camera. Kapiris, closest to camera in that wild Batmobile. What a launch from Ben Bray. Kapiris in trouble early. Had to double step it at least. Yeah, Peter may have been a little bit gun shy after watching uh, what happened to uh, Fabietti, but Ben Bray, you can't take it away from him. 4-3-0. Will that be quick enough? actually helping the boys out on opening the car up, taking the covers off and presetting it, doing the shoots. I do a few other little things on the car, but mainly I guide the car back and help heat line up and after the burnout, basically. So, yeah, everybody's involved. It's a full team effort. Well, Matt Abel is one of the wild men here this weekend and a possible chance for victory. What got him excited about door slammers, though? I think the unpredictability of the door slam is the reason I stepped into them. I've been running sedans for most of my career probably uh, about the last 15 or 16 years and the step up to door slam is the pinnacle of the sport. I think um, mostly the unpredictability, they're yeah, not the easiest thing out there to drive. I'm, I'm running a 57 Chevy, uh, it's won six Australian championships so I think, it might be six or eight. Um, Victor drove this car to six and I think Ben drove it to two. Um, it's probably got more laps on it than any other car in Australia and probably a few of them combined even. Um, it's a good car, it's a good solid car, even though it's old, still goes good and straight. You know, and we've, been, we've run a couple of good fives in it, we're trying to get some consistency out of it now. It's one of those things when you start trying to run real fast, 
you know, you can take some steps backwards and that's where we've been going. We took a tyre off it in uh, Sydney, went through the body and we're just trying to get back to where we were from there. Yeah, they took the car to Bunnings too during the week. Everywhere you looked around Mildura this week, there's been these cars on display. This is a wild looking unit. It might have some laps on it as he refers to it, but it still looks cool. Well, this is the two Northern Territorians. You've got uh, Matt Abel from Darwin and, of course, uh, Andrew Sutton from Alice Springs. But I've got to say, I actually think the winner will come out of this pair because they've done so Ooh. much racing up there in the Northern Territory. What about McLean? Yeah, McLean is a rookie. Went very quick in the first session, but see how late he was on the lights. Let's see how he goes in this session uh, when we get to him. But in, in reality... I honestly think the guys that have got the experience on running on regional tracks, not the big championship capital city tracks, they're the ones that have got the advantage. And we just heard from uh, uh, Matt Abel there, that car has won eight Australian championships. It has done over 1,500 quarter mile passes. Set for a start now, Sutton furthest from our camera, Abel in the Karcher Racing 57 Chevy, closest to, oh wow. Abel was a bit asleep on the line, but geez, come back strong now. Well, Matt Abel with a get out of jail there. I think Sutton had him cold over the first 100 metres. Look at the better reaction Point time five. for uh, Sutton. But all of a sudden, the big yellow Karcher car, it just found its legs. Yeah, what a tremendous job. Lucky really to get away with it on a one-eighth mile. But Abel, a happy man. Let's catch up with our winner. It wasn't too bad. I left it, you know, with a reasonable amount of RPM. The clutch locked up and went down the track. The uh, probably would have gone a 4-1, maybe a 4-0 if I hadn't just put the thing into top gear. When I put it in top gear, it, it uh, decided to smoke the tyres. So, um, no, it was all pretty good. You know, I think that track has been underestimated. You know, it's not too bad. I've won races, but I haven't gone to the final. You know, I, don't know, I have gone to the final. I went to the final at Willowbank in a competition meeting. But to actually win tonight would be great. You know, especially, you know, um, Cameron from Karcher, the CEO of Karcher's here. I'd love to do it for him. You know, and his two boys are here. It'd be great. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it is for the final. But at the end of the day, it's still just another race. The most important thing to me, you know, the whole time I've been racing, is to make sure my car is in one piece at the finish line. I don't mean the engine, I mean the car. Because if you crash the car, that's major. You know, it costs a lot of money to fix it. Um, engine parts, you know, they're readily available. Building a car, we've got six weeks to the next race. Um, that makes it real hard to make the next race. So, my, you know, I won't do nothing stupid. Deno Brzezki uses the eighth mile for the burnout. Pops the door open real quick and gets a serious amount of smoke out. You've got to be happy with the way the Blake family is going here. Just look at that amount of smoke inside Dino. That might have been in there before the burnout. We're not really sure. Looks like Cheech and Chong in there. But I'll tell you what, there's just as much smoke went through the crowd. <laughs> this race tech injury, what a result it would be for these guys to get into the final. There's his lovely wife, Katie, backing him up. Interesting concept. Blake running a four-speed transmission. Everyone else has got a three-speed. Will the four-speed, the, the, the ratio selections, assist him over the eighth mile? He's already got a quick time on the board. And, of course, with this only being a one-day event too, Robert, just takes all your time for R&D out the window. Who is going to win this one? Great launch from both of them. But Jeski marginally quicker, but Blake puts him away. Oh, Deno Brzezki there got loose in the middle of that course. You saw him wrestling that car. Rear end trying to uh, swap ends with the front, but Blake, a great pass. Gee, it's a 4-2 again. Remember, the quickest so far is a 4-1-5. So Blake is right in there at the moment. They've got to be happy with the way things are going. We uh, never expected to be this competitive here, to be honest. Um, I was expecting a a best of a uh, 450 or so, but um, we certainly outdid that. We did that on our first pass, so um, we're pretty wrapped. And uh, I'm, I'm happy for the crew. You know, they've, we've come a long way, and uh, you know, we, we've had some hard luck lately. And uh, we've blown up two engines in two runs, and it's it's not been happy for us. And to come out here, and I suppose to some extent, we're probably the underdog. Um, and to be this competitive, it's just great. 
Well, Craig Burns knows two different sides of the racing game. He's a chassis builder, as well as a driver here this weekend, running with the Brzezki team. Uh, yeah, 67 Camaro, uh, 521 Hemi, screw blown, Lenko, full chassis car. Yeah, top door slammer. I build cars for a living. I built door slammer cars for a living, all chassis work, fabrication style of it. Uh, got the opportunity with Deno to drive the second car and jumped at it. Yes, and why wouldn't you? As day falls well and truly into night here at the Edge Hotel Motel Sunset Strip. The Sun Razor alive with the sound of door slammers reverberating through the Miltura air. Rob Oberg, I've got to say, double thumbs up. This concept's a winner. Have a look at this. Victor Bray just pulled up on the finish line after his <laughs> burnout. And the crowd are just absolutely going nuts over this. And I don't think this track has ever seen as many uh, heads along a fence as you've got tonight. This is unbelievable atmosphere. There is Marie Bray backing up her husband, Victor. I hope he never gets sick of doing this. I hope he's around forever, the big man. The big well, tomato farmer is just an icon of Australian motor racing. He'll be keen to try and make the final. Normally we have two rounds of racing and then the uh, the winners go through to a semi-final and final. Because we had the delay with Fabietti's crash, the two quickest winning times from this round of racing go straight to the final. Burns, it looked good early, but the flame was snuffed out and Victor on his game, a 0.156 reaction for a 442, it's in there. But as you said, he doesn't have to put a 4-1 on the board. He's already had two wins and looked good doing it. Yeah, 440 might not be quick enough. We'll have to wait until everybody's rough. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, obviously after Morris um, cleaned the wall up there, there was everyone's all had great concerns. Uh, it turned out, I mean, you know, the 420s run 410s. I think, um, you know, it, it sort of, when Morris was out there, the, the, the sun was on the track and sort of the clean-up time let the track cool off a little bit. But um, we went at it pretty hard early in the run. I think we could even go at it earlier. And uh, the track's a bit loose in the middle, so we just make the arrangements up there. But, um, you know, 450, the boys are running 420. It's up to us to get out there and go faster than them. Well, the work and the man hours he can spend on his cars is never ending. As Brett Gillespie explains when we asked him how much work goes in between events. Uh, usually, uh, like a complete rebuild of the engine, we go through basically everything from front to back. Make sure that the more work we do on the shed at home, the less work we do at the track. This team's made up of a bunch of mates getting together to go racing. Uh, we've got uh, six guys in the team, including myself. So the boys usually come over uh, a few weeknights before we race and um, we spend a bit of time on the car then to get it ready. With us, there's no spares, so if we blow an engine, which we haven't done yet, touch wood, uh, you know, that's just not an option for us. We race with one motor and, and that's all we've got. Yes, and there is a bit of pressure in that, but there's more pressure in lining up alongside McLean, who, for my money, is the real wild card in all of this. Scotty McLean out of Darwin set the fastest time of 4.15. He is the man to beat. Well, it certainly is, but of course he was a bit late on the lights. He's now got a target because in this round of racing, we've got a 4.27 for Abel and a 4.20 for Blake. So either of these races, if they want to make the final, they really need to look at something in the 4.1 second zone. It's a wild looking bit of gear too, isn't it? The red line plumbing, Oz block entry. It's getting a fair bit of media time too. This guy doing a very good job. Not a huge amount of well, level one experience in the big lights, but he's not scared. Oh, hell no. I mean, these, these guys have been putting on a fantastic performance. And McLean, this guy, I think, is an absolute star of the future. He's got to run quicker than 4.20 and get the win line. That's the target for both of these races. Oh, he's lazy on the line. A point three against a point one four. Oh, I think he got Gillespie, didn't he? Just at the very end. I don't think so. It's so close. Up. There it is. The win goes to Gillespie. Oh, man. Such a skinny margin. A fantastic 4.22, but McLean will miss the final. 281 kilometres an hour. He was fast at the top end, but it's not enough. I loved it as a kid. Uh, grew up in South Queensland, used to go to Willow Bank and then moved to Darwin and then uh, became good mates with Matt Abel and one thing led to another and here we are buying a car. It's not all second nature yet. Got to think about what we're doing and what the crew chief wants me to do and change gears and how and when. 
Um, and then, yeah, once the engine starts, it's, 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 it's a lot of adrenaline, I guess. And then you just sort of just do what you've got to do and hope for the best. So I guess there is no feeling. It's just as soon as you bump into second stage and you see that orange light, um, if you see the green, well, your males will turn it off because yeah, she's all over for you. So just got to try and be focused for that split few seconds and try and get it right. So Have a look at this. Peter Blake and Matt Abel, a couple of giant killers, are into the final. Rob Oberg. Oh, fantastic performance. They're the guys that were in the mix with the winning times. Well, before we get to the final, there's going to be a grudge match between Victor and Ben Bray. And Victor might be making some changes. Uh, we're going to change the clutch around a bit. We're going to change the uh, fuel system around a little bit. And just the way you drive a little bit on the start line. Uh, you know, these cars have got so much power, you can't use it all, all the way down the track. So you've got to dial it in as you go down the racetrack. And the amount you dial in, the amount you use first off, and the amount you use in the first 60 feet, and then in the, for the full track, is very, very important. And that's what you've got to change. We've altered that from the first run. We're going to go a little bit faster this time, we hope, and put a little bit more on the start line, a little bit more out to about probably 300 feet, and then try and keep the top of the track smooth where it is. So. Welcome back to beautiful Milchura, Victoria, for the Slam Fest. The top door slammers are in town. We're moments away from a big grudge match. And Dave Sullivan is the crew chief for Bray Racing. Let's catch up with him. Uh, my job is basically, as a crew chief, get the car back, service the car in between rounds. So basically, we look at the uh, look at the engine, make sure we've got no damage, check our oil system. Uh, that's where we get all our telltales. And just keep an eye on the guys. We go right over the car. So we get the clutch cooled down so uh, Benny can adjust it for us. Check the rear end out, make sure there's no damage. On a track like this, we've got to go right over the cars thoroughly, and we do that every every time anyway. Check all the oil lines, make sure we've got nothing loose, um, make sure our blower's A-OK. -okay. Any damage, just get into it and repair it, basically. I look after, predominantly look after Victor's, but I oversee Benny's car. Jamie uh, looks after Benny's car. So yeah, we've had the same set crew on these cars for oh, five years or so now. So we basically, everybody knows their job. And we all check each other's work, you know, there's no problems with anybody coming checking your work. So yeah, we get on all good, yeah, it's all good. I, to be honest, I get very nervous and I'm very worried. I just, all I think about, I'm not actually looking down the track worrying about that. I'm thinking about, I hope that's tight. I hope we've checked everything. But I know I've got a professional team with me. So um, just basically, I just know that everybody will do their job and but I get a little bit worried, to be honest. I get a little bit tense, a little bit uptight, and I do snap at a few people. We just got to hook in, got to do the job. Um, we just start thinking ahead as we're going down to pick up the car. We start thinking about what we need, where it is in the trailer, because we carry a lot of spare parts. So we basically, we can just about fix anything. We've got a fiberglass kit if we have uh, body damage. Uh, we've got spare tyres, we've got spare gearboxes, spare clutches, spare motors, you know, so we've got everything covered basically. Uh, as we're going down there, we just start and uh, talk to the boys and saying, well, this is what we need to do, this is the order we're going to do it in. But the boys know what they've got to do anyway. Yeah, the boys on the team saying, did Dave say he snaps at people? No. Ben Bray, we're on board as he brings it into stage for a monster burnout here at Mildura, up against the old man. This is a battle that people will travel anywhere to see. And they have. <laughs> it's been talked about a lot. A lot of people during the week were saying, will we see an Aubrey final? That's not going to happen. But the crowd are going to get the show anyway. And believe me, Victor would love to just put the young bloke back in his box for a little while. And how would Marie feel about that? Uh, she just wants a Bray win. Yeah, well, that's going to happen. We know that much at least as Benny backs her in and gets himself in stage. An enormous crowd here at Mildura. They love their motor racing. And the Sunset Strip facility jammed to the rafters. What a winning concept Slam Fest is. Gold, gold, gold. All the way. Everywhere, right around Australia will be watching this. This is what needs to be rolled out regionally, nationwide. Nothing in the reaction times, but Benny's putting the old man away. I say old man with respect, Victor, I promise. Benny Bray, a 166 reaction time, a 4.43 ET. Not really much in the case an hour. They knew he had the win. He was backing it down, but he was under the gun early because Victor had him off the lights. We've got a huge final coming up. Let's have a chat with the crew chiefs behind the scenes that have to put the tune up in these cars. Uh, there's a lot involved. Uh, tonight it's just getting down the track safely. Uh, we want the car to go back in one piece. The track's good at the moment, but it's very narrow. 
And if the car strays off a little bit, you get one tyre on the poor traction, it turns the car around and you're likely to hit the fence. So we're just trying to keep the car smooth. We don't want it jerking around. We want it to go straight, which it's been doing. A lot of guys haven't been able to get that tonight. We're just lucky we have. And if we can do that again on the next run, we'll be right. Just uh, service and car now. The boys are getting it service. They're just going to uh, get it all ready, go out for the out for the final, and uh, just going to try and do much the same thing and uh, get on down there, try and run a mid twenty, low twenty. We've probably taken five hundred to a thousand horsepower out of this tonight, just to make sure it gets down the track without turning the tyres. You know, once you start, well, he's getting off it just before the end of the track, as a matter of fact, because he's spinning the tyres in top gear, and um, it's starting to get a bit of a worry you know so he's he's getting off it before the end and you can see on our computer that the wheels are spinning and, and getting a bit of traction and spinning again so that's right on the limit you can tell the Blake team has an enormous amount invested emotionally in this event we've worked so hard we've had so many problems um, we've dropped a couple of valves on a brand new motor uh, we've put months and months of work and it will be just great for our uh, self-esteem and to keep us going a little bit longer, yeah. We've just about had, a, had enough, you know. It's all work and very little play. Five are only just new to this car, but the boys like Matt's been, Matt, the driver, does a lot of work on the car during the week. He does all the main servicing. Um, a lot of amount of hours get put into, into making these cars go down there for the 4.2 seconds they run over here on the 8th or the 590s, 580s. Uh, they run on the quarter mile, but they, uh, they do spend a lot of time on them. But, uh, Obviously, the reward's good enough. Well, Brody used to race this car before he stepped out and his son stepped in. The big question, I guess, you have to ask, would you ever drive again? Never. You think I'm crazy? These are the scariest things. I reckon all the guys that drive these cars, they haven't got a real lot of intelligence. They are scary, I'm telling you. You get in those things, you take off, you're doing 100 mile an hour in under a second and a half, and you don't know where the car's going to end up. The front wheels are probably off the ground most of the time. Yeah, they're very scary, eh? I want to get one of these cars myself one day, and uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's still adrenaline rush working on them and watching them go down the track from behind, so it's uh, all good. So who is going to win the inaugural Slam Fest? Is it this man, Matty Abel, in the Karcher 57 Chevy? Or will it be the Blake family? They're all crazy, reckons the crew chief slash dad. Well, the bottom line is they're both uh, looking for a top door slammer win. It's not an Australian championship, but it is the first of these eight mile meetings that have been run in Australia. And I have to say that for both of these drivers, I think they treat it equally seriously as if they're lining up for an Australian title. Well, for me, this is great for the sport to see someone like Peter Blake right now, wife just backing him up and in the opposite lane, the Karcher car, the able entry, massive crowd here. The event has been going off. Miljura has embraced this top door slam event. It's been a long day. Remember, we started in blazing heat with, when uh, Fab hit the wall. They're still here now with the moon high overhead, Rob Oberg. The hourly rate for entertainment is absolutely yes. top value. And a final like this, Blake, can he get the breakthrough? What about Matty Abel? We got Darwin versus Sydney. Ball a point one against a point three reaction and he'll go on to win it, Rob Oberg. Oh, big run for Matt Abel. 4.34 seconds. Not as quick as earlier, but the wind light's on. He's got the trophy. He's got slam fest. Well, Blake did everything he could again. That car tracked beautifully. But they can't catch the Karcher car. What a run for Abel and the CEO of Karcher's here. This is a fairy tale run. Uh, yeah, no, it was good. No dramas. Actually, the uh, track was a little bit dusty, so it uh, was a little bit loose in the top end of the track, but it left pretty good. Um, from what I've been told from outside, it looked like the car I was racing was catching me, but I shifted the gear, pedalled it, and uh, grabbed for a short time and just started to spin the wheels again. Spun them a couple of times. We still got to the finish line in front, so it's no dramas. We're pretty happy with what we've done here tonight. Uh, I got drilled on the lights. That's no, no secret. Um, you know, we, we did uh, our best half track time this weekend and uh, just got a bit loose in the top end and I couldn't, um, I had to pe back pedal and uh, get off it towards the finish line and uh, I think that finished our run for the night. But um, congratulations to Matt, he's, he's 
done a good job here tonight and um, the track wasn't was a bit slippery but we did some good times so uh, we're really really happy with that so from the outside looking in slam fest has been a major success we asked some of the guys inside the show what did they think of the day um, the event turned out fantastic. Uh, you know, it had to be a bit tricky. It's not one of the, not one of our normal tracks that we go to, an old bitumen track, you know, hot day. So it worked out pretty good in the long run. The crowd certainly come along. They were so pumped about it all. So, uh, yeah, it's just great to be here and great to be a part of it. And our track prep guy from Brisbane who come up here to prep the track for us, he told us before we all went to bed that he guaranteed us in the morning the track would be fine. Hey, when a guy does that to you, you just got to believe him. Went out there today and I tell you now, I don't think, other than Morris's crash, it was a perfect day. The local crew really put in uh, a lot of work to get the track to where it is now and uh, they saw some really good racing. A uh, little bit hairy, but uh, everyone survived. Man, I can't believe it. It's like 11 o'clock and they're still up there watching it. It's just crazy. I've never seen that before. Usually, you know, once they group one goes, they all walk away, but they're just staying here right to the end, which is really good. It's really good. They must, obviously, they miss drag racing, I don't know, but it's, it's really good. Pretty good, really loud. You almost blow up your eardrums. Well, it has been a memorable day of drag racing here at the Edge Hotel Motel Sunset Strip in Mildura. A massive crowd, some awesome racing. Well, what about a result for that Karcher car as well? On behalf of Rob Oberg and myself, Wade Orger, hope you've enjoyed our coverage of Slam Fest, and let's hope there's more to come in years ahead. Coming up after break, we look back on round two of the 2010 Australian Superboats Championship from Griffith in New South Wales.